check check here we go hey hey all right all right we are live on friday evening so hello everybody uh, i'm here with my friend jim russo uh we're gonna be playing uh newport beach's famous pelican hill tom fazio course a little bit less difficult than the best page blacks that we've played the last couple times so hopefully we'll have a little more uh entertaining and some more birdies so we're gonna get started here. Jim's gonna go first. I'm gonna get him loaded up and ready to go. Jim's got a lot of nicknames. I couldn't decide which one to actually give him. So we're gonna uh, Russo's work rocket. on a couple right. of them. So just wanna make sure I'm putting the course wind back on and we're gonna tee off. Definitely put the course wind on, yes. Oh, we got all the cameras now. Wow. Oh, we got the, the sunset, sunset. All environment. Right. Oh, we're going downhill. So as you guys can probably tell from the accent, Jim Russo is a native New Yorker. We'll talk Brooklyn, about that. Brooklyn, Brooklyn born, born and raised. raised. All right, so we get you aim straight down the fairway, downhill 100 feet. First, first tee is way downhill. Uh, wind is helping, so just bomb one down there. All right, here we go. Look at this, first swing. The other interesting fact about uh, Mr. Russo here is that he is legitimately ambidextrous. He plays golf left-handed and right-handed. We forced him to play right-handed today due to the you know, space constraints of the uh, room, but we're going to talk a little bit about all of that and how he came to play, play golf and do all kinds of things both, on both sides. All right. Well, I'm going to that swing a little bit. Try to, well, first swing, middle of the fairway and a short par four. Nothing wrong with that. I'm just going to try to hit this one straight. And Power. I kind of pulled it a little, a little bit, but this is such a huge fairway that's not going to hurt me too bad. No, look at that. Beautiful. Get down the fairway. Absolutely beautiful. All right. All right. No problem. Oh, and by the way, this is my first stream as an official Twitch affiliate. So if you guys have an Amazon Prime account that's linked to your Twitch, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Or if you just want to give me your own money, I wouldn't be upset about that either. All right, guys, I'm going to have to put this one on the green for everybody. So All right, 185 go. yards out, 33 feet down. Oh, another. Oh, got on top of that one a little bit. Another top, okay. All right, Jim, so tell us a little bit about where you're from. Well, Brian, um, I started my journey back in Brooklyn, New York, back in 1958. 58. Yeah, you didn't 58. have to date yourself, but I guess that's going to lead uh, into the I rest like of that. the stories. I'm proud of it. You know, it's one of those things that you wear, your, wear it well, <laughs> hopefully. Jim, so, yeah, they're, they're asking if you were a pro wrestler in the 80s. I think that's pro wrestler in the 80s. No, not at all. <laughs> not at, no, I wouldn't entertain that. Well, my, my brothers were all wrestlers in high school and college. Jim was a boxer. Yeah, I did a little boxing in the military, uh, following in my father's footsteps, who was a, a, a really good prize fighter back in the 40s and 50s. Taught us the sweet science. Oh, that's a beauty. And yeah, feel free to talk while I'm playing. It doesn't bother me at all. Okay, okay good. Off to a nice Beautiful. start, the pitching wedge down the hill. All right, you're going to have 73 yards. Pins in the front of the green here. I'll smooth out here, guys. It's understandable. Lots of, lots of gyms out there. All right, just a little wedge in. Oh, that looks just a little left. It's going to go, though. All right, we're going to test my way in, guys. We're going to test Jim's my way in, Brian. short game here. <laughs> inching my way in. Also, I'll let everyone know, Jim has not played golf in quite a while due to the uh, constraints of COVID and work schedules and knee issues and all that. So this is a nice return back to the game for Jim. Oh, this is a, a treat, everybody. Put it, put it in the middle. So you're still... That's yeah, right. That's right. This is a real playing. treat, everybody. Um, I've been isolated. I haven't played in over a year and probably two or three times in the last four. So. Ooh, you get all that one. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you got okay. okay. 
The other thing that I'll uh, note for you that confused a couple people is when you get inside of 30 yards, it yeah. switches to feet. So all of a sudden they'll say, hey, you're 30 feet away and people will Look think the they're 30 yards. Feet. So you're 32 yards here. Okay. So just a little chip on the green. Yep, yep, yep. There you go. Get down that hill. Nope. All right, you got to dial in the, the short game. It's going to be just off the green here. So now see how it's switched to feet, 55 feet. Right. That blue means you're going downhill a foot. Gosh, and you're, <laughs> you can putt it. So actually, let me just do this so you can see the ball. So you chipping still? Okay. Yeah. So just, just a little chip. Yeah. Get it going. It'll go all the way down the hill. There you go. That's going to work out just fine. So, Jim, your father was a professional boxer, is that That's correct? right. My dad was a, a prize fighter. Um, he started his career in the 1940s, 1943. Went on to have a pretty illustrious career. Uh, was rated number one for many years. Had trouble getting some matches. Fought as a lightweight. In those days, lightweight, like today, would be 135. But he often fought middleweights and... Light heavyweights. Oh, and started off so, with a birdie. Depending on, they fought every week, every two weeks in those days. Oh, the schedule was brutal yeah, back then, they, right? They there wasn't years between title fights. It was weeks. It was weeks between fights and title fights. As long as you came out of a fight uh, capable of going in two weeks, you, you'd go. Sometimes you'd go the very next week. Sounds crazy based on everything we know about recovery and professional sports. And obviously, you know, the, game, the game's a bit different nowadays with the money. We've learned an awful lot, and uh, letting the body heal is can't do enough about that. Six feet, boy. Six I'm feet. To just, just barely just touch this. Get it to the end of the projector there. It's nice and easy. There you go. Popped it in. Nice. All right. All right. I got out of there. First hole out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> I got out of that one. <laughs> yeah, so in our home, it was, uh, you know, we, we were like, if your dad's a professor, you learn to be a professor. Dad's a fighter, you learn to be a, a fighter. <laughs> so we learned the sweet science at an early age. Um, a lot of the fighters, though, were, were real big golfers. And, and that we were turned on to the golf game, excuse me, at a very, very early age. You wouldn't know it from my game right now. But since the mid-60s, we got to share a lot of courses with guys like Jake LaMotta and Rocky Graziano, Sugar Ray Robinson. And these guys could all stick it, man. Just like Brian. I'm gonna go a little right because that wind's gonna help push it into the trees. That's okay. Get get left down that hill a little bit. Right. Oh, right behind the tree. <laughs> Don't navigate that. So you've played some golf or been around some golf with some some big time. Yeah, you know, man. like regular guys. I was lucky, you know, I kind of grew up with these gentlemen, so you know, they, they were just regular guys and um like I said, they were taught the game when they were in their early teens. They were sent to golf courses to caddy. So they right. learned the game, you know, spent a lot of hours on the golf course uh, learning and becoming real good at it. My dad wouldn't play woods. No, no. My iron, dad wouldn't sir. play woods. He'd go around the course with a one iron, a two iron. Yeah. I, I, I you know, forget it, man. Crazy. <laughs> so Straight down that fairway. Is it the camera or Jim's feet relatively huge? <laughs> no, they are big for my size. Jim, Jim's got some big feet. They are big for my size. Shorter gentlemen. Yeah. I, uh, you know, me, my sport growing up was actually basketball. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah. That's how I blew my knee out uh, back in the mid-70s in high school ball. So I, I love the game of basketball. Um, you got 140 to the hole. There we go. 140. Okay, I know what that one is. Of course, Crob is the one that is uh, concerned about foot size here. <laughs> never, never ceases to amaze the things he'll pick up. All right, here we go. Good, good swing right down the hill. I right, had some power in that one. Just a tear right. Oh, uh, a little right. Stick yeah. on the edge of the green. Ah, right, good shot. Good. Thank you. 
All right. I'm somewhere around this tree. Oh, I got to look at this. 60 yards out of the rough. So, so to the feet thing, my yeah. father would say, that's why they can't knock you off your feet. You right. <laughs> got to be good for the balance. Yeah, good for the balance. Good to, you know, hit and not be hit. But if you're going to get hit, try not to go down. <laughs> Seems like good advice. Yeah. <laughs> but mostly try not to get hit. That's my, that was how I was taught. Move around. All right, on the green, I'll take that. I think I might be away. Let's see what it says. I think I was 37, if I was really saw it right. Yeah, 35 feet, putter. Oh yeah, look at that, that's cool. So yeah, straight so out though. Yep, so you're just, just off the green on the fringe. It's up 10 inches from your feet, so you gotta give this one a little juice. Yeah, he hit it hard enough. Too hard. Inside five feet to give me. A little too hard. A little, little too hard. Yeah, and you get that hard. hill going downhill at the yep, end. Yep, yep, yep. I got psyched up. Tough to stop it there. <laughs> I will make no assumptions about the rest of you based on your feet, Crob. Well, that's still going on, huh? Yeah, we're, we're having some... Nine and a half to ten. <laughs> we, we've t turned this into foot Nine cat with, Ke with Kevin Robertson. Hey, these, by the way, are uh, Laker sneakers oh, you get provided your... by the Laker organization. So right. Jim's got some ins with the Laker organization. Oh, the old regime. The buses? Yeah, we were, we were friends with Jerry and, and uh, Frank Mariani um, since Dr. Bus's passing. Um, we haven't oh. been as close, but... You know, great yeah, organization, was, great organization. <laughs> that was a bummer. Yeah, Crob, Crob, don't you need bigger feet for your swimming and surfing? Doesn't that help you paddle a little better? All right, putting for par here. Just a little uh, 14 feet. 14 feet. A little downhill. All right, no bionics. Mm. Stop. All right, he's got a six footer. No gimme. <laughs> no gimme. <laughs> as far as golf. Let's get this in. Yeah, tap this one in. There you go. Oh, just doesn't break down that hill. Stop. Wow. Six feet right, to six feet. Guys. The putting is what gets everybody Push this in. Everybody that comes in here has about six to 18 holes worth of putting woes before they figure it out. Mm. Oh, come on. <laughs> just, just tap one. So think about it this way, right? So from where that ball is to about here yeah, yeah. is about five feet. All right, okay. And you're hitting it all the way off the end. Yeah, so yeah, just, yeah. just hit, hit the ball to, to right there. Right, right, right. There you go. That, that's much better speed. There you go. <laughs> All right, that was better. It, 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 I'm telling you, it takes a long time. Yeah, you, well, you, you get those nuances down, you're in. You don't have the, you know, the visual reference that you would out on a golf course of where the, you know, the well, hole is and how far you know, away. Yeah, no, I understand. And I, I am all old school. I do everything really. I look at the wind. <laughs> you know, I haven't used the, the new met, you know, binoculars that we have. And uh, I kind of keep it kind of natural, I'd say. Old school. All right, we got a short par four here, 300 yards. Wind is into us. I'm gonna. If I hit a good drive, I can carry almost to the green okay. here. I wish the wind was going the other way, but even if I put it in one of those bunkers, that's okay. I just can't. Can't top one here. So, what's the biggest? fight you've seen back in the day whether it's you know with your father or just other guys that you were in the in the scene with watching at the peak of their their powers back in the day you know I, I was at a lot of fights as a kid growing up uh 
Which one was the best one? I, I couldn't tell you. I got on top of that a little bit. Get over that. Yeah, that'll work. Just enough. Unfortunately, I didn't go to a lot of live events. Um, so I missed out on a lot of that. I watched a lot of it like everybody on television. You were around those guys, though, I assume. And, and Grew up and spent time. They were all retired. The fighters I got to know were retired from the game. They were from the 50s and the 40s and Joe Lewis from the 30s and oh, yeah. Jack Dempsey. So... Well, Customato. I got to spend a lot of time with Mike Tyson when he was a young kid, when he first started out. We had a heavyweight named Bobby Diedelmeyer, who we were thought was going to be quite good, kid out of New Jersey. And uh, Customato, good friend of the family, uh, had taken over, you know, had brought Mike Tyson, had adopted him, basically, and brought him into his family and uh, was teaching him the, the fine arts of the game. And we got to know Mike really well. And, uh, oh, that's horrible. So, what was Mike like as a young man? Back? You know, I, I, he's, I, in my opinion, he's been miscast in decades, and we're seeing more of like his his genuine personality right now. Oh yeah, he's a sweetheart of a guy. He came out of a rough situation in Brownsville, New York, which is Brooklyn, and uh, so I'm still up. Yeah, yeah, one one eighty three uh, out of the rough is about a two hundred yard shot. So whatever. Mike had a very. Uh, very difficult youth. He was on the streets by the time he was 12 years old. Very similar to Rocky Graziano. Very similar story. Yeah. Very similar fighting styles. Although Mike was taught. Mike was a good student. Rocky Graziano was not a good student. He really didn't like to fight, but he knocked you out with one punch. It's a good way to get through a match. No, that's, that's how he did it. Um, yeah, that's fine. You'll end up going down onto the... Cool. Yeah, no, Rocky was, uh, he didn't like to train, he didn't like to work out, his dad beat him up as a kid, it was a bad story, um, you know, he was robbing for, Robin. him and Jake had a story, they met in uh, the detention school for kids, and uh, they said, we were, we were thieves, but we were good thieves, we, we only stole things that began with the letter A, an apple, and, a, a refrigerator, yeah. an air conditioner, a bicycle, a car, uh, began yeah. with the letter A, Link stole, so that's what they did, and they ended up in the penitentiary. But they were young kids, they had to eat, their families weren't really supporting them. And those, that was uh, the depression era kids. Some of right. them had that, yeah, that in front of them. 50 yards here. You're, you're up, so. Okay, got it. Yeah, so Rock was, uh, you know, he didn't like the game, but he was great at it. Right, but Mike on the other side, he was in the gym constantly. That was what I understand. This was just soaking everything up constantly. Mike was a sponge. He watched all the old, you know, he was connected to Cuss, and Cuss with Jimmy Jacobs was the other partner, and they owned all the libraries of all the old fight films. So they really um, could teach Michael all the nuances of the game that he needed to learn. And he was receptive. So he learned how to, how to hit, how to duck, cover, punch, punch from below. And, you know, a kid that's more, a little more than a middleweight in size uh, was able to just knock the tar out of, out of these big, giant heavyweights. Oh, yeah. He, was... you know, he put on muscle and big, you know, he got big, but... Uh, was a small guy who learned how to fight and protect himself. He fought the same style as Floyd Patterson, who was trained by Customato as well, the peekaboo style. Oh, that's that's Just beautiful. Go though, it's gonna bite. Twenty-two feet. Fifty-seven. I think I'm way. Ah, you're twenty-eight feet. All right. Yeah. Show us the line here. All right, just uphill a tiny bit. You're going to be breaking to the right and speeding up at the hole, I think, based on that, that break. I pulled that one a little bit. I did. Speed was much better. Yeah, the speed was kind of where I wanted it. Yeah, just, ooh, there's another oh. ridge. There's a ridge going away. See that? Did they show us that? Is that visible? So you could, yeah, if you were looking, you were just on like the top of a, a ridge going like this. And if you had gone to the right a little, it's going to fall to the right. You went to the left. Oh, I see now. I'm not going to look for this. Yeah. yeah. I see the undulations. So this is you again here. Yeah, 34. Yeah. Road right off. This one's thing. uphill, almost two feet. So you got to hit it pretty hard to get there. Yeah. It's a much better stroke. It's going to just 
Can Can we sure. top of that hill? Like, see it coming back? Oh, wow. Yeah. So but this this yeah. course gets you on the greens. It's not a long course. Right. It's not super penalizing off the tee. This is me here. Yep. But the greens are crazy sloped, and they're not very big. 22 feet up a foot, and then see how mine's going to break to the left at the end. And yeah, so you got to get the distance just right. If I miss the hole, it's going to speed up and get pretty far away. Oh, oh, if I don't even get it to the edge of the hill, it's going to come back to me. Wow, so that's on a hill. Yeah. That's on a crest. Straight up a hill. I think I'm just inside of yours. Nine feet, five inches, six inches uphill. That's it's okay. Just sit. Oh, just outside of gimme range. <laughs> Tell it the putting is going to take you six or seven holes before you kind of settle. Your down. brain goes, okay, I kind of have an idea. And then you'll have a hole on like, you know, the 10th hole where you just get confused again because it doesn't do what you think it's going to do. All right, eight feet, eight inches, up six. <laughs> it doesn't come down the hill. Uh, that's a trace putt right there. Brian Otto putt. Straight in. There you go. There you go. Yeah. All right. You know, funny story. I told you we had a kid in the early 80s, about 84, 85, about the same time Michael was making his move. And they each had about four fights in, and they were both appearing on ESPN in the early days. Right. My dad was kind of handling Bobby, and he had him being trained by, uh, what got an ex the way to forget his name offhand. But anyway, so they both kids won. Tyson won, and Dietlmeyer won. And my dad was out at dinner with D'Amato and Tyson and Dietlmeyer. And uh, Cus says, hey, Freddie, how about we put these two kids together, huh? And my dad As looked in, at him. They should fight each other? Yeah, we put these two kids together. They'll fight next time. You know, we'll, we'll see who's going to go on to be the champ. And my dad looked at Cus D'Amato and he said, Cus, not on your life or my life. Is, am I going to put my, my kid in the ring with your kid? Yeah. <laughs> he said, there's not a snowball's chance in hell. Uh, he, what we're going to do is Bobby's 4-0 oh, and we're going to take him to Europe and fight all the European fighters. Right. We'll come back 15, work his way back. Work our way back. Get some skill. And then try to get in the ring with your guy. But uh, you why not put him in there with him now. Feed him to Mike Tyson? Yeah, we couldn't feed him to Mike Tyson. So the bad story for Bobby, he was very talented. He became friends with uh, Jerry, Jerry Cooney. You got 130, Jerry had 132 yards. Yeah. Okay. Probably don't want to hit that drive. <laughs> 132. So Jerry... Downhill 30 feet. Jerry had issues with drugs and alcohol at the time. And he got Bobby in his, under his wing and pretty much ruined the kid. No, I mean, really? Yeah, so. And he was ruining his own career at the same time. Because he never, he could have been one of the great fighters. Truly really great left. Oh, that's right at the hole. Stop. Ah, that's going to stop. That's banked on the back. Yep. Nice shot. Thank you. I think I should be away there. I hit mine pretty short. Fifty-two feet. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good putt. My favorite. Fifty-two foot putts. Up three feet. This is straight up a hill. So it's like I sixty feet. Let's hammer this. And you did. Go. That's wow. Wow. Man. All right. I gotta actually make an eight-footer for a par here. All right, 25 feet, so you hit yours oh. half as far away as me. Huh? Up five inches. A little hard yeah, on that little. one. But he still, oh, hit the hole hard. That's a good, nice par. <laughs> <laughs> nice par. <laughs> we'll take them. The golf gods are giving them. The so the golf gods are friendly in here, too. They can be. They can be. They I've can. also seen some pretty violent lip outs of 
hole putts you oh, think you would have made. We'll, I'm sure we'll see lots of good ones for me today. Whoa. Blocked that one a little bit, but man, just inside of gimme range. It's another three putt for me. You're going to be up first on the next hole. Yeah, that's a rarity. <laughs> that hasn't happened back, in about a decade. Back in the driver's seat. <laughs> All right, so this one, we are going over a little canyon off the tee. And down to the right to the hole. So let me aim you here. So you're aimed right at the middle of the fairway, about 200 yards out. The wind's going left to right, so that's helping you just kind of keep it right in line with the fairway. Right. So a nice straight drive off the tee is going to work. Got under that one a little bit. On to the t <laughs> next tee box. Got our first puff up there. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Now you're going to have some work to do. Right. You could have been in the canyon, so that's uh, yeah, that's a good blessing. not the worst. That's a blessing. That's a All blessing. Right. We'll take I'm going to go out there. Another kind of short par four here. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's true. We don't want to get anybody, you know, banned, anybody else banned from Twitch today by dropping their pants in the middle of the stream. Oh my gosh, that happened? Well, we, there was some, uh, some very popular streamers are getting kicked off of Twitch for various reasons right now. One of the most popular ones got kicked off today, and nobody knows why yet. Uh huh. Wasn't for you know being taking his pants off on stream, but he had a couple incidents earlier where he had uh, was doing a live stream from E3 in LA and took his, his cameraman took his camera into the bathroom and kept rolling. Well, you know the guy's talking to the camera. All dudes are behind him using the urinals and stuff, and he he got got banned for a couple days for that. Rightfully so. I'm all about the segways, Crab. All right, you got that teed up pretty high for... Yeah, whatever. no, I'm not doing that. That's... Yeah. But we're all eagerly waiting to see what the reasons for some of these bands are. Get over that canyon. Yeah, you got over, Get over that. It's a little off the toe there. Yeah. All right, you're getting there. 180. Wind's helping. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought you were talking about my segue to the uh, Dr. Disrespect. Yeah, he's, he met nice connection with my drive. I hit it good. I just towed it out to the right and caught the hill. Yeah, you know, he's a little blocky, a little blocky, catch the, catch the bunker. All right. All right, 50 yards out of the bunker. So how long were you in New York growing up? You were there? Spent most of my youth back and forth between New York, Brooklyn, and Still New you. Jersey. Yeah. And yeah. New Jersey. And actually did my schooling in New Jersey. Grew up in New Jersey and spent my weekends in New York City. And, uh, okay. We'd go to the city to play handball, paddle ball, basketball with all the family and friends. Where's my club? I'm sorry, guys. There we go. Crab, come down to SoCal. We'll uh, get you some, get you poached up so you can get back into the golf game. Oh, I crushed it. Oh, you're good. Good, good, yeah. good. That's fine. <laughs> you needed a big swing out of the bunker. <laughs> no, it's right. That's right. All right, 35 yards out of whatever junk this is. Yeah, it looks better than it did going in. Yeah. Yeah, it was scary when it rolled in there. All right, I'm going to try to 
get this onto the green somewhere. Oh, stop. Nah, everything's rolling away. Pretty sure I'm going to be away here. So I'm thinking one fight that was a lot of fun for me here was uh, I went to see Madison Square Garden. Gosh, I think it was late 60s, early 70s with my father, who was calling the fight for um, Muhammad Ali versus Oscar Bonavena. Oh, wow. And he was calling it with Howard Cosell. And they didn't get along. Oh, your, your dad, Howard, didn't get along. You know, Howard didn't get along with the guys in the booth on Monday night. I think my dad was just trying to play that game. Right. And they 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 argued. Uh, they had a good show, but uh, they they were entertaining. They were entertaining, but they weren't very fond of each other. <laughs> that much I remember. Did they have any history before this? Or no, they you a... know they're both they're New Yorkers and they spent a lot of time in those nightclubs. You know, they knew each other, so um, I'm sure it was predated a little bit. Howard was very opinionated, and so was my father. So it made for a... And they both felt they were very articulate right. and loquacious. So they used their, their words cut. a lot. And, uh, okay, six feet, dang. Just uh, that gimme <laughs> range of five feet. Is yeah, that? I'm looking for that five-footer. I got a 32-footer here. It was, it was funny to watch the changes of the old regime with regards to Joe Lewis and Muhammad Ali growing up. Um, little by little, they all eventually became Muhammad Ali fans, but it was hard to it was, you know, for them to oh. think that the, you know anyone could beat Joe Lewis. And, right, and that rightfully so. I mean, so. I mean what time, a, was anybody? He, he was, he, and you know who knows because his boxing skill was so tight and such great power that I would have loved to see him go with any of them. You know, right. any of the great champs. So. All right, six feet, just out of that gimme zone. They kept a lot of people from fighting him, right? Or him from fighting a lot of people? Was that common back then? Very common. Um, no, I'll tell you. Knock, knock this in. There you go. That's going to be good. Nice. They're very common. You know, the mob and the organiza organizations, the NBA that controlled the boxing championships at that time, there was only one belt per weight class. Right. And they, it, they really manipulated it. And... If you weren't willing to, to throw fights, if you were one of the top fighters and you weren't willing to drop fights, you rarely got chances for the belt. You saw that in the, every movie about a champion almost. They were, right. you know, throw the fight and they won't throw it. And that happened to everybody. It happened to my dad. Uh, they wanted him to throw fights to give him the title shot and he wouldn't do it. it happened to Jake. Right. Rocky. It happened to all of them. They were good guys. They were good kids. They were American athletes. They just wanted to be champions. And, you know, the powers that be wanted them. Wanted money. So, yeah, a lot of fights that could have happened didn't. Lack of belts, you know, uh, per class cost them a lot of money and, and, and opportunity. Man, I love the way you lean back on that back swing. Yeah, trying to get that. Yeah, I love that. Their back. I'm getting under it a little bit. What was your father's name, Jim? Uh, Freddie. Freddie Russo. Freddie Russo. Freddie Russo. Chad is out. He had about, he won his first 51 fights coming out of the gate. And, uh, Pretty good record there. For yeah, he was in the to start he, off. He was in the record books for quite a while, till the guys started fighting. You know, little by little, they little. Julio Cesar Chavez when he when he passed my dad. I remember I'm like, oh, he's fighting taxi cab drivers. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a little different. The guys in the um, the guys that they fought back like in the boy. day were uh, they were all super well trained and capable. Mm -hmm. You know, the fighters then all fought a hundred fights or so their careers as opposed to 30 or 40. So it's a right. big difference. Yeah, the, the cadence skill set. of the schedule is yeah. just so much different. And the skill that. set, the, the, the amount of hours they put in just seemed to be more. Um, yeah, you know, works. for me, you see a Floyd Mayweather, and I love his style. I don't, he doesn't lean in and, 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 and take it to the guys all the time, but yeah. mostly everything else I love about it because he's preservationist. He's going to protect yeah. himself. He's going he's gonna to live to fight another day. 160. Well, okay. So let's let's think about this one for a second while you catch your breath on the yeah. story. You got 156 yards out, but you're 32 feet below the hole. So I think you got to hit this almost 175, 180 to get on that green. And you got room over the flag. So if you go a little long, that's okay. okay. So I would, I'd, I know what 180 I'm yards is yeah. probably the number. Thank you, sir. Brian's always my guide. 
when we play, it helps hone me in. Jim listens better than most people. I try to help out and most people ignore my advice, but Jim gets credit for listening most of the time. I need all the help I can get. <laughs> Good swing, just a touch left, but that's going to get close to the green. Yep, just a little chip up there. Ooh, oh, there it is. <laughs> All right, where am I? I'm in a bunker on a terrible lip 100 yards out with a tree. All right, this is, I got to manufacture some kind of shot here. The aim out to the right to avoid the tree. Maybe the wind will bring it back. Hit a gap wedge so I can get over this lip. Try not to hit the tree. Well, I've seen this lie a lot of times in my life. Oh yeah, this is a fun one. Yeah, not right. on this course obviously, but. If I can try to draw it a little bit, that would be ideal. Go. Yeah, I'll take that. That works. A little draw over the lip, around the tree. Very nice. All right, 88 feet. So you got a 30 yard, 30 yard chip. I'll run up. All right. Get up there. 20 feet to the hole. Uphill, six inches. Left to right. Uphill, 11 inches. Sorry. So you got to hit it, hit it 20 feet. Yeah, that's the number, right? How's uh -oh. the volume on everyone's mic? It's going to go in. Ooh. Inside, give me a range, though. Ooh. Nice up and down there. It's fine. Cool. You guys can hear both of us just fine. No one's too loud. I probably boom every once in a while. Yeah, I mean, you can't avoid the, the little fluctuations when you start l looking directly into your mic and looking away. But... All right, nine feet, two inches. Pretty straight. Oh my God, why did that come out so far right? Mm. All right, well, I'll take a par there, but that could have been a, could have been a birdie. All right, let's see what this next hole is. Oh, par three, put the driver away. All right, 150 yards. Well, I got to tell you, Brian, this is this is simply incredible. Got to tell you, pretty neat. This huh? is absolutely incredible. <laughs> I, I, I again, I you know, I haven't played in over a year, and last time I was with you, I, I swing on, I practice on my deck. <laughs> yeah, and I've seen so, that. This is phenomenal. Hitting balls into the canyon. Yeah, no, I stopped hitting them. <laughs> I just do dry swings, you know. Yeah. Practice swings and whatnot, and line up with the mountains and such. So this is a real treat. This is an incredible setup. Push it out to the right again. Catch a piece of that green. Ooh, that's going to be a fun putt. I used to get my right leg underneath me a whole lot better than I do these days. I noticed that. Well, that's what we were talking about before we started playing here. Yeah, my sorry, my pants aren't quite as bright as they were the last couple times, but. Uh, Jim's a, Jim's a little bit of a more solid lefty than a righty, I think, at this point in his career. But we just don't have the option for him to play left-handed in the space we're in at the moment. So making do with the right-handed swing. I, I, you know, one of those golfers you could actually, I could play part of the round righty and part of it lefty. Well, I've seen, I mean, we've played round where you've hit the ball one, one way and putted the other way. Yeah, I mean, if, if I had... Um, I always thought over the years now, the decades, that maybe it'll, I, I'm better as a hitting woods right-handed and, and uh, irons uh, 
lefty. It's hard to feel. That's crazy. You spend a certain amount of time on each leg. Right. But when you have a driver or wood, you have a longer backswing. Yeah. So you're on that. For me, that's my solid leg. So I'm on that stable leg a whole lot longer. The minute I shift to my unstable leg, all kinds of shit starts to happen. Right. <laughs> so as we saw from there. Yeah. So where am I? What am I doing here? So you, you're in, your ball's right, actually in front yards. of that tree. So you're 100 yards out of the rough. Got to hit about 120. So growing up, Obviously, learning boxing. Uh, do you think that, that contributed to your ambidextrousness when it comes to? Oh, it absolutely did. My my dad. The very first thing my father did, as and I'm lefty, so I'm a southpaw, like 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 Rocky Balboa. Yeah. And I'm a southpaw, so my dad said, "Well, you'll never get a fight. I'm five years old. You'll never get a fight. No one will fight you as a southpaw." So no we switched me. Five year old lefties. <laughs> oh, we got kids. Me and my brother should see the pictures, but. You know, yeah, no one will fight you as a left. So you got to learn how to fight as a righty, and you'll have a great left hook. And that's kind of what that was about. So I learned, switched me right away. And then basketball is a whole other story, because with basketball, the coach wanted me to do everything right. Oh, look at this shot. Yeah, yeah my, so my father is a lefty, naturally, but he plays all of his sports right-handed, baseball, golf, everything that's a swing, because they were just forced to back then. They right. would say... Put the no, bat in your right hand. Put you, throw the ball with your right hand. Right. Yeah. Baseball, they made me play both both ways. So, so just going back to the boxing thing, when your father says you're not going to get a fight as a lefty, was that because boxers didn't want to fight lefty because it was more challenging? For yeah, them? it was much more challenging because, right. you know, nine out of ten fighters are right-handed. So right. everything you see is coming at you from, from, the right, from the righty perspective. You fight a lefty, completely opposite. You, everything you're taught to do don't work. It's a, it's a, it's a bad situation. And the southpaw fighter... Fights right-handed fighters all day long. Right. So he learns how to move against the right-handed fighter. He's more comfortable moving against the right-handed fighter. And so, you know, it's a it's right. slight advantage. Um, you know, they teach you where to put your feet and, and all that. And, uh, you know, you learn to adjust to it. But uh, my dad taught me how to switch. And I always felt like if you watch Roy Jones or even Floyd Mayweather or any of your really balanced fighters, they always switched lefty, right, right. depending upon the angle and the side and the yep. style. So I, I was a big fan of that. Yeah. My dad didn't like us. Say, stay right-handed. Stay with the ducks. Right. That's a much smoother putt. Just a tiny bit left. Mm. Sit down. Mm. Okay. Yeah, you caught the hill after. Yeah, the, I did. After the whole. Oh, I had to go way easier than I did. Look at this. Look right, at these, this. These How greens you? are. Brutal. The rest of the course is, is scenic and fun. I went around the <laughs> Devastating. Oh, my God. Okay. Oops. Hold on a sec here. Yeah, where am I? Right, we, uh, I, got, I hit it so bad, the, the, the screen stopped working. Okay. There we go. All right. All right. 16 feet. Oh, oh no! You crushed it. I crushed you knew it. it from the I knew you it the second it. I knew it. <laughs> hey, here we go again. Back down the hill. Do this. Right. Sorry, folks. Right, this is high quality material right here. Look at that. Just keep going. Keep going. I went around the thing, didn't I? Oh yeah. I went right around. I just did a full circle. Fringe green, fringe green, fringe green, fringe green. Just rolling down that edge. You're not rolling the right I mean, way. I should, I should turn an ad on here for a minute while we wait for this ball to get to the <laughs> bottom of the hill. There it is. 34 feet, and we know it's going up. Plus 12. All right. So now you're going back up the hill. 21 feet, up two feet. So put some juice in this one. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, I was... Just stop, though. Stop. Oh, just outside of five. <laughs> Coming back. Stop! No! They put these pins on the uh, I'm sorry. edge of all of these massive slopes. Well, you know, buyer beware. I like the line on the right Look at this. that's tracking your, on the right side there. You get a nice little horseshoe. Look at this. Yeah. Okay, we'll wait. Just keep going. It's going to go all the way down again. Keep going. 
you can fast forward. <laughs> <laughs> the total distance of your putt from where you started is seven feet, and the total length of your putt has been about 50 feet. Yeah, so. look at this. Ay, ay, ay. We're done? Yeah. I'll show okay. you what not to do. Out of bounds. I'm not going to get up the hill. <laughs> oh, my God. Ay, ay, ay. I can't even stop. I mean, we just could, no, we you just, can't we're stop. We're forced to just wait. I'm so sorry. It's it's all good. This is tea time. We're learning. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm going to learn. Is right. I saw that. I'm like, no, I don't have to. I was hitting it. I was going in my mind by the 20 foot practice putts, and they seem well. This is two feet uphill, yeah. so you got to really yeah, yeah. Stopping already? Stop. All right. That is quite the map of the putt there. All right. Now we're at 20. I'm losing. I'm losing ground. Get it up the hill. <laughs> All right. That is definitely getting up the hill. Hit the hole. There you go. Inside of gimme range. So you just got to crush it is what I got to do. Ay, ay, ay. That'll go on the highlight reel for later. Yeah. Yeah, yes. <laughs> All right. 10 feet straight putt. Man, everything is a little left. And I'm going to follow you down the hill. Oh, my. Peace. All right. Well, while we're waiting for this ball to stop. Yeah, let me clean up. I can let's get some balls up. back it's over in the uh, playing area. Any questions from the gallery while we wait for... Uh... All right. Here we go. Let's see if we can get it out of this hole. Oh, we're still rolling. Jeez. Yeah, I thought I, I thought we were done. Had a minute. The camera there. changed. Oh, I know this putt. I know this putt. <laughs> uh, well, I watched you hammer it and pitch yeah, a piece of the hole. So. Did it. I was trying to finesse it up there, thinking I'll lay it on the top or something. And no, you just got to get it up there. Now stop. The, the round killer right here. This I was cruising along and not one over par. All right. There it is. What's next? Something. <laughs> What's the next torture? <laughs> Less brutal. All right. We got to. Oh, I love the sunset. I'm assuming this is going to be a par five based on the length of this. Yeah. Par five. 520 yards. Nice. It's Amy. Right there. Looks good. Yeah. I was one over until that hole. Now I'm three or four over. What size tee is that? Uh, so this one is like a two inch. And then, yeah, normally it's made to go underneath the mat, so it's a little higher. Right. On the floor here. Kaboom. Hey, I finally hit one. Yeah, Great. you hit that straight and powerful. Beautiful. Okay. I hit the target. Beautiful. All right, maybe we can get there in two. There you go, nice swing. Just a tiny bit underneath it, but nice and straight. Cool. Which T were you using that time? Uh, the yellow. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the right height for you. Yeah, I like that one. All right, par five. Just go straight down the fairway. Whatever club you feel like. Yep. 
gonna open up a beer here while you're taking a picture. Sounded good. Yeah, it was good. It was a good stroke. Not as far as I thought. Roll, baby, roll. Do you like a beer? Yeah. All right. Love one. Let me take my shot and I will. 236 yards. Aim. That's a little cool if you want to grab one. There's no, no. Bottle opener right there. Cool, cool. Where's the cooler? On the ground, on the chair. Oh, right in front of me. <laughs> Soft cooler. Beautiful. Yeah. Very nice. 240 <laughs> uphill. It's kind of right in between clubs for me. I'm going to hit two iron here. Wow. Hit it hard, but it's going a little left. Towards get over that, yeah. Oh, get up. Yeah, 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 go on. That was so nice, close nice. to being good and so close to being in the bunker. Yeah. Ended yeah. up in the middle. Rode that ridge. Oh, I hit that bad. Yeah, that top of the left side slid out a little bit. It's all right, 60 yards, wedge. Yeah, totally had no left leg when I came through. Oh, Solid. Right next to me on the green. Yeah, there you go. Sort of, kind of. Got there. So tell us a little bit about your experience boxing in the military. Well, that was kind of uh, fun. <laughs> 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 I went into the military uh, right out of high school and uh, joined, and Vietnam War was just ending. So it was 1975, summer of 75. They sent me down to Fort Jackson, South Carolina, and uh, that was a rude awakening. A little different than New York City. A little different, and I was now in the south, so yeah, it was a little different down there. But uh, after we got through boot camp, and I was in pretty good shape and all that, you know, there was a, uh, a sign one day on the gymnasium door. I was down there playing basketball, and there was a sign uh, looking for fighters to form a boxing team. And so I went down there and uh, signed up, thought I could get out of some, you know, PT and some extra extra duties that way, <laughs> maybe get on the chow line ahead of everybody else, those kind right. of things. And uh, so we did that, and uh, we started the boxing team, and I uh, went in, and I worked with a lot of the fighters, because a lot of the kids were raw, and didn't really have boxing background or knowledge, so I just spent a lot of time training the, the team. And Right, I imagine yeah. you were one of the you know, more knowledgeable actual boxers in the group. Yeah, yeah, we had... Uh, you know, some raw talent, let's say. Little, little juice on that one. Well, I was looking at that uphill, and I'm like, <laughs> thinking it uphill. <laughs> it went way uphill. Too, too much out. uphill. All right, 20 feet, straight putt. I would putt this one. Okay. Yeah. And you're coming out of the rough, it's going to take a little while. I would just try to hit it 20 feet, and I think that'll get you inside a gimme range. Look at it, it make it. Ah, just look that. Another lift. Just outside of gimme range, too. Jeez. So when you, you know, when you're boxing in the Army, are you boxing all um, up next year? Other... Oh, Military members, just army outside, like just the, well. Then what I what we did was just the military. Although now it's probably wide, it could be wide open. Right. We had tournaments against other bases, and we traveled, you know, 
Fort Sill, Fort Dix, Fort Monmouth, and uh, whatever, wherever they had a boxing team, we'd, we'd kind of make matches and, and go do that. And, or they'd come to our, our base, which is Fort Jackson. I just let that out. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. And uh, I managed to you know, make a lot of friends in the army with the say, military brass. And they'd come down, the generals and lieutenant colonels were all big fight fans. So they'd all come down and hang out. Five feet too, so I missed it by two inches. Tap in, just a tap Yikes. in. Just hit it to the end of the dark green path of the mat you're on. There you go. Yeah, I overhit yeah, it. Just, I overhit it. <laughs> yeah, just got a little soft and pulled it. That's fine. All right, what hole are we on here? Nine, right on time. Yeah, so it was like you know, it was it was a nice. Uh, it was like being on a basketball team or, you know, any kind of team, football team and baseball. And we got real close to, the, 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 you know, all the, all the uh, stable mates, all the fighters and traveled around. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we, uh, we had a pretty good team. I did pretty well and uh, was able to avoid a lot of uh, inspections and uh, double duties and things like that. Right. You got taken care of a little better. Yeah, taken care of a little better. You got a few extra perks, weekend passes, things like that. Uh, I kind of aimed more right than I normally do, but I did not turn quick enough. Mm. Any any stories of fights going bad? Well, yeah, I caught a, you know I caught an elbow in the eye. Uh, I was boxing this middleweight. They they set me in a, to fight a middleweight, and I was probably about 132 pounds soaking wet. Uh, and he so was a, middleweights, how much? 160. Okay, so, so about 30, 30 pounds. pounds is... About 30 pounds. And, but he was, you know, he was like a Joe Frazier kind of kid, you know. He was a little wild, so I could duck and duck under stuff and, and kind of counter him, and uh, it was good. But he, he did a swing, and he came back and caught me in my left eye with his elbow. Shat like it wasn't my nose. It would have shattered my nose, messed my eye up pretty good, blew it up. I somehow got through to fight just to win. Oh, gee. So. <laughs> not, not only did you get through, you yeah, went, just, win the fight against a guy 30 pounds bigger who broke your eyes yeah, socket with an him. elbow. Yeah, I'll box him. Right. And if you don't quit, you know, like if you don't walk away. Which right, you can. You know, it wasn't, I was standing still, so I was okay. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, I just outbox him. He couldn't hit me, so right. that's the thing. You know, I used to love, it's funny, when you, you get in the ring, uh, you fight someone your same size at pretty similar speeds and rhythm but when you fight someone bigger or, or shorter or heavier uh, everything changes yeah and so when i got in with anyone bigger or taller or heavier i loved it <laughs> right because they just couldn't they couldn't connect they couldn't touch me uh if you got hit you knew it <laughs> yeah so <laughs> but for the most part it was very hard for them to to deal with the smaller guy if you knew how to box it's gonna work yeah Good contact. I didn't, didn't blow that one. Okay. So eventually you got out to Los Angeles, and I know I've heard uh, bits and pieces of stories, but you got into the film business, and I know you've been on some movie sets as an, in a boxing capacity yeah. and, and otherwise. So yes, I'd sir. love to hear. And you're, yeah. you're up yeah. till 230. Yeah, hours. I, uh, you know, it was like uh, I came out here in 1979 after I got out of the Army in 78 and went to film school in New York City. Uh, learn how to edit and direct and kind of make videos, mm -hmm. make movies. And so I wanted to come to L.A. I gave up a position at Madison Square Garden to maybe pull cable for, as a cameraman. Mm -hmm. Now let me come to L.A. And I did that, and I was stoked about it. And... Yeah, that'll work. Well, it's hard to get work. Come out somewhere, you know, you got your money in your pocket, you're reestablishing. It's 1978 going into 79, and... Uh, Started working at a health club. I became a personal trainer at the holiday spas, and uh, still needed some more money for income. And they found they were they were making the movie on Jake LaMotta. They had been working on it for three or four years already since the mid '70s. Oh, yeah. uh, my dad and Jake spent a lot of time with Robert De Niro and uh, Pesci and all these guys. And uh, you know they were trying to teach him how to be Jake LaMotta. This is Raging Bull. Raging Bull. Yeah. Familiar. Yeah. So I was looking for work and uh, needed a little extra money, and so. I called Jake and he said, yeah, we're out in Los Angeles. They're making my movie. Come on down. And, you know, the rest was history. I, I kind of went down to the movie set and uh, spent the next six months working on the movie. Bobby and the gang 
and uh, got to meet all those folks. Got to meet you know so many walk-ons every day. You never know who was going to walk on that set. Right, could be Archie Bunker, Carol okay. O'Connor. I'm sitting there, and the first day I met Joe Pesci really was uh, we're sitting at the lunch table. Carol O'Connor's there. Archie, he's holding court. Bobby De Niro, Martin Scorsese, and and me, and. Uh, and there's this guy next to me, and he's got the worst mouth. I, I, I grew up in Brooklyn, so I, I hear a lot. And uh, this guy's effing this and effing that, and I'll do this. And I'm like, who is this guy? I'll get him out of here. I'll move him out of here right now. And De Niro says, take it easy, Jimmy. Take it easy. He goes, he's, this is Joe Pesci. He's my co-star. He's playing Joey LaMotta. Oh, and I went, oh, okay. Well, Joey never spoke like that. <laughs> and, and they looked at me. And uh, really, Joey LaMotta was the most gentle, biggest, wonderful gentleman in the world. So they played him a little rough, a little crass. But Joe Pesci was hilarious, a great guy. 84 yards. So I got to be pretty friendly with Joe and watching Scorsese make a movie was, was incredible. He was slow and, and tedious and very definitive about everything and he'd reshoot everything. That movie with De Niro, he, he was uh, ready to become a prize fighter after the training he did. He was he right. Was that good. He, yeah, he, he, I remember those stories about how seriously he took. Oh, he was incredible. All the fighters that, that worked in the movie were all professionals or champions or former champions. Uh, a good friend of mine, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. Kid started out as a welterweight, welterweight, middleweight, light heavyweight, heavyweight championships. Incredible fighter. Hit it. Oh. Probably one mistake I made was when they shut down the movie because De Niro was losing weight. He went from 160, 55 pounds for those fight scenes that spent so many months on him. He, uh, he was losing weight rapidly. Mm -hmm. And so we were feeding him everything we could. And, um, and 20 uh, yard chip. Maker. He couldn't gain weight. So they shut the movie down for about almost a year. And he basically took off and went to Italy. Right. Came back, you gained 75 pounds or something. Jeez. Oh, yeah, I didn't, didn't nah, quite hit nah, that. I needed to. All right. All right. Same, thing. same thing. All right, you found another little edge of the green of the never-ending roll. The roll. Well, that's what happens when you hit the ball weak. <laughs> you know, you got to put it up there, and otherwise you pay that price. All right, 32 feet out of the rough, downhill. Well, I'll set the high record for you, that's for sure. Uh, you, got, you got a ways to go to get to that level. We've had some pretty uh, tough performances out here. Now roll down the hill. Oh. Yeah, I think the mistake I made was when they shut the movie down. They called me about a year later and they said, we'd really like you to come with us to New York <laughs> and finish the movie. And because uh, I was in a bunch of scenes, ringside, and uh, I did some double work for De Niro, but mostly it was the ringside stuff. But they wanted me back there as a, to go back in as a New York extra. They liked the shots of me in the, in the zoot suit, greased mm -hmm. hair. But I was working pretty steadily, so it's like took the bird in the hand, so to say. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't hit it. I didn't hit it. Hit it. That'd be good. Yeah, it's better, better than not. feet away. Good. Good. Lionics were up. That's a tasty beer. Yeah, it's a good little uh, wheat. Yeah, I like that. All right, I gotta make this one to save. Left. Every putt I'm hitting is just starting left. I feel like I'm lining up the wrong way. Yeah, you never know which way things are going to go. 
Um, I look back and I think, yeah, I, I probably missed a little bit by not turning pro. Mm -hmm. I went out of the Army. That was an intention, intention of mine was to turn professional. Had some shoulder injuries and during the move out to L.A., even when I was out here with, on the Raging Bull, the, the trainers kept wanting, Jimmy, we're going to want you come down and start, you know, we'll, we'll go pro, we'll go pro. But, you know, one thing I knew, man, you get hit in the head too many times, it's a short, it's a short journey. Seems like in the long run probably worked out. Yeah, still moving. I still got, you know, a lot in front of me. And, um, you know, so uh, better, better miss. I feel like that wasn't even lining me up for the no, break no. there. We're, uh... But doing the movie thing, you know, I got a, had a couple years with that. And, uh, you know, I worked with some, I got to work on a movie called Hollywood Nights. Oh, yeah, I remember with that. Tony Danza and Michelle Pfeiffer, um, the nanny, Fran Drescher, Robert Wool. Um, Robert I used to hang Wool. out with Robert a lot on that. Yeah, he that. was. Good guy, funny, really good funny, people. Yeah. yeah, really good people. And, and I was in, you know, a lot of the background shots. I was part of the Hollywood Nights crew. Got to hang out and drink beers with Michelle and eat burgers with her. Yeah. Her and her little sister. All right, I think you're going to be up first here. We're, gonna, we're on the 10th hole. We're going to take a real quick one-minute break. We'll be okay. right.
All right, we are back. Jim is up on the 10th hole here at Pelican Hill. Well, that was a heck of a walk up that hill, Brian. I'm just... All right, you're aimed right down the middle of the fairway. Let's see if we can pick up where we left off. Let's see if I can improve on some of that. Oh, oh, the oh, break. Oh, oh. Tighten him up a little bit. Oh, boy. <laughs> Forest. Oh, boy. Okay. I tell you, that was a big walk. <laughs> that walk took my legs. All right. Where are we at? 400 yards. Wind's going right to left. I'm going to aim out to these bunkers and hopefully let the wind bring it back. So one of the other things that I know you are known for and passionate about is uh, growing some cannabis and our chat would love to hear about wow some of your experiences there because that is yeah. obviously in uh california a topic that's been pretty that top been of journey. mind for the last handful of years yes sir brian that's been quite the journey um <laughs> Ooh. oh my god We'll never tell, Krob. We'll never tell. Get uh -huh. down. Stay. Yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, coming from the, the era that I come out of, for sure, the 60s. Um, we've been around cannabis a lot of years, and, and we, we believed in its uh, attributes. And many years ago, when I first came to L.A., I, I actually just, got to know Jack Herrer pretty well. Just, and just Jack Herrer was a kind of like a, a prophet of the, of the cannabis industry. Yeah. And he knew about the therapeutic properties and the healing properties and the, 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 the textile capabilities of cannabis. He knew a lot about it. So he, he taught me a lot. Oh, 256. Just, just, you're in the junk, so you're going to just pound one where it's aimed and see if we can get you back in the fairway. Yeah. You might hit a tree, you might not. Just go yeah, for it. Yeah. Just hit it hard. Oh, no. Yeah, that was almost inevitable, but. All right, let's see where we're at. Okay, so the hole's this way. Let's see. Yeah. Like... <laughs> just just yeah. punch one right over there. Yeah, you're yeah. back in the barrel. Yeah. Wow, I was way out of it. So one of our viewers says, very interesting. I love Jack. Jack Strain and its derivatives. Oh, yeah, 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 Jack Strain's, and they're still making it today. That's right. Absolutely. So, yeah, I made, you know, I made a decision. I spent 35 years 200 yards. in the home video industry, yeah. um, manufacturing, distributing movies, opening up retail stores, had my own retail stores in Los Angeles, and I spent 13, 12, 13 years with Netflix, and I finally... Uh, when the time came, I saw the cannabis, cannabis industry legal, legally coming, the medical potential, everything was happening. So I had been growing since the 60s on my own privately and was able to, uh, you know, make a decision to come into an industry. It was kind of, for me, it was kind of like the beginning of the video industry. Right. You, know, you had a, you know, you went from not having any video stores in the country to where you're starting to have, you know, video stores everywhere. And then it's the same thing with cannabis and like coffee and Starbucks. So I made a move in 2010 to, to kind of get into that industry and follow it and uh, get involved as much as I possibly could to get a license. Went through some partnerships and a lot of heartaches, very tough trail to follow. Became a master grower at some level. Um, and uh, I work in the movie industry today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's how that goes. I sell movies. But I mean, you know, I, I have some, 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 some strings in the, in the industry. My wife is working with a licensed uh, grower who, who's doing it right and spent years and years at this. So, um, you know, we're, we're lucky to, to have what we have, 53 yards. That was your specialty, though, growing. Yeah, we wanted to grow organically. So before it became legally licensed in California, um, we were uh, 
able to sell it medicinally to the dispensaries that were up and running um, in the city. Right. So we identified the, the, the fair, the, the operators that were the dispensaries that were, let's say, operating you know, legally. And we went out and got our, our permits to do business. And we started selling what we were growing as organic cannabis. We weren't using any of the chemicals. And, and pretty much that's what the industry standards are today. They, oh, I, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. That's fine. But yeah, the industry standards are to keep it as clean as possible and mm -hmm. make it as a medic medicinal experience. And if it's a recreational experience, they're not hurting themselves. Right. So it's a uh, long time coming for a guy like me, uh, decades, to see a, a plant with the attributes that it has finally getting its, its time. Yeah, it's crazy. All of the sort of benefits and medicinal uses that we've been missing out on because of the stigma of right. not being able to test these properties. and Right. If we had been able to do the right testing over all these decades, it w we would have known so much more. Look at that. Oh. oh. All right. Let's take that. Easy par. So what kind of strains were you growing or are your favorite? And that Straight up, um, I like the Indica. Um, I'm an old OG guy, so, you know, uh, right. you can take me back to the Panama Reds and Right. And, and, you know, the Acapulco Golds and the Mishimacons. I like that. But when you get into what we have now, the Sensimillas, uh, you know, Indica. And the gentleman I'm connected with uh, has been growing the original L.A. strain, True Classic OG, since 1995. And so uh, True Classic will be on the shelves throughout the city of L.A. and state of California probably next starting next month, actually. Okay. So, um, you know, it's been a long run for him. I've watched him build he's literally had to tear down two twenty thousand square foot buildings and rebuild them one of them's thirty thousand square feet you saw the one we had was five thousand yeah and uh so that's a lot to get it to where the city you know would approve what we were doing there was a lot of work involved oh yeah a lot of work and he's just now six eight months in getting the volume to where it's testing legally. Right. So he won't, he's not even selling. He's just growing and to, destroying. To test and get rid of it and get the levels. So and 30,000 square foot building, he's running one room till he gets the, the, the mixes right. Right. And, and that's that. All so right, let it be. Now. Knock this one in. Let's... He's there now. He's finally got the, the combination correct again. So I like the OG to answer that. On the black I love, top. Black top. I, I love the OG. And not all OGs are the same, right? And what right. grain is it? Is it one or 10? Oh, stop. Yeah, you keep, keep hammering these downhill yeah, I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> Distracted by uh, the story. Yeah, it was just in my story. So, All right. Knock, knock this one in. Okay. Uh, I need a 25-foot putt is what it is on this course. Plus three. There you go. There you go. Get that. Woo! All right. All right. That's going to be I told you need the 20-footers. I remember the five footers. I'm a good ball boy. <laughs> Any uh, stories in that industry that are were interesting enough to share that in the cannabis industry yeah I mean uh, any any run-ins with crazy people trying to get oh there's in lots business. you know this the gentleman I'm friends with now and my wife works for he's been I think he's protected and has a lot of friends in the city. Right. My outfit that I started out with, my partnership, uh, they've been robbed three times. Really? So not in the last year, but just while they were setting up, just getting their business up and running, um, they literally were robbed three times. So one partner was tied up, one Jeez. of the nicest men you've ever met meet in your life, <laughs> the sweetheart, <laughs> really smart, uh, great builder. But yeah, he got caught there one morning and they came in and, uh, you know, we had a fun story. We were growing in our home in Beverly Hills. We had a... Uh... Well, I missed it good enough to be in the open part of the course. I had a house in Beverly Hills with like a three-car garage, so I turned that into a grow room with the permits and whatnot. And uh, one night, I had the owner didn't really know about it, so this is an off-the-cuff story. <laughs> the owner says, Jimmy, I'm coming home from Oregon. I, I want to check the house because I think I'm going to come back in and sell it. That's kind of stuff. So 
Um, we had to do a, a, a really a midnight, you know, pack everything up in a U-Haul. Right. We had to take down my, my garage. We had 120 plants in there, halloid lights, air conditioning units. So we turned it into a YouTube studio. <laughs> <laughs> emergency came back, YouTube studio he turned it into a YouTube studio put all the plants they were five feet tall put them into a U-Haul parked them around the block for 24 hours and brought them back in and you know everything was and then we were out of there we are actually it was at the transitional time we were getting ready to move to our building nice good swing yeah and uh, but all's fair in love and war we came out of it okay unscathed we were scared shit my poor wife was you know, dealing with all the carrying plants out and back and forth. What do, what do we get ourselves into, Jimmy? All right, you're going to be up here 140. We were feeling like prohibitioners. Right. Honestly, um, we weren't doing, you know, we were like the distilleries with the prohibitioners, and then we were selling it to outlets that were legitimately doing business. But at that point, it was... Right, everything, Meanwhile, they everything gave us was the, a gray area, a gray even area. if you were permitted. and Yeah, they, you know, we, I, I, I had licenses and permits. To do, I just hit that. To do everything I was doing, and uh, yeah, that was ugly. Yeah, I had licenses and permits, so it was amazing that the you know the jurisdiction was all over the place. Right. Ninety feet from me, you're just inside of that. So now I know, you know, about a hundred of the top stores in the city. I don't do any business with them. I'm not in the game. And uh, I'm very happy. I sell, sell movies all over the world. Oh, just get inside of five feet. Five inches. One of the things growers go through that's a problem that's funny is they, they go nuts with it. They start out and they'll, they'll have one strain and then you'll turn around and their room will have ten strains and and, you know, they all want different nutrition values and different right. lighting and different t temperatures. So it can be a real mess uh, when you get caught up in that one. Right. It seems like one of the aspects that just knowing what you're doing gives you, sets you apart from people that kind of know what they're doing right. or think they know what they're doing. Right. Well, that was the thing is like my friend David with True Classic, he knows what he's doing. He's been at it since 1995. And... Uh, he grows one strain, maybe one other one privately, but right. one basic strain, and that's it, man. He's like, that's enough. Get it up there? Yeah, a little too much. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> to the bunk. <laughs> All right. All right, you are 41 feet, so you're like 12 yards out of the bunker. So just a little, just a little pop it out of the bunker and onto the green. Do you hit it the same way if you're in the bunker in this thing? No, huh? Like a, like a bunker where you take the sand? I, I tr try to hit like a flop shot if I'm in a bunker just to kind of simulate that ball forward, club open. Get in. Oh, that would have been nice. <laughs> That's, I tried to flop it. Yep. I kind of tried to flop it. Yeah, so I try to put it, you know, the ball forward, open the thing up, and just pop yeah. it up. Yeah. Gives you a little bit of that simulation of hitting a bunker shot. The only thing you're not doing is obviously hitting before the ball. Right. It's one of the things I remember righty, which really playing right-handed golf for me goes back really decades. And I remember some really nice power coming out, coming out of the, out of the uh, traps, you know? Right. Um, which I haven't had that um, sensation as a lefty. So I know, but I played a lot of tennis and I, that's one of the reasons I, I leaned into righty and felt because of that tennis, I'm a lefty. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, hitting the ball out of the bunker, I've had some fun with it. Hit that lip. Oh, he made it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lucky. Wait a minute. Golf gods. The screen on the Android app is black because of one of the tags. I think that's true, but I will get rid of it. Hmm. Who's telling you that? Uh, my friend Doug is saying mm -hmm. I'm taking those tags off there. Update. Let me know if that changes anything or if you had to reload it. But that's very strange because I've had those tags up. Pretty much the whole time, just for fun. All right, five feet for a birdie here. Birdman. 
Yeah. Did that not go in? Oh, that didn't go God, in. I left it short. Oh, no. wow. <laughs> like brutal. I'm counting. One of the things to you know, go back, you know, get off the cannabis thing. I mean, that that's been a, a an incredible journey, and the, the story's not completed yet. That's for sure. Um, we threw a festival in 2000. And oh, that's right. Yeah, on Venice Beach, um, we had we brought the people from Seattle, Washington, down to join us. They they've been running the uh, festival up in Seattle called the Hemp Fest for over 30 years now. So they came down and kind of mentored us, and we were, it was a tribute to Jack Harrer for anyone who does know Jack and. Uh, just a you know beginning of the cannabis doors opening up and you know people kind of stepping up a little bit and speaking out and so we had a lot of fun on uh, on the beach that day and uh, the place the city was with us we we you know they roped us up and uh, did it all through the legal you know stems of the city and uh, it was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun I think we brought you know a few thousand people through and it was all positive positive. and this was the hemp fest in. Santa Monica. Yeah, it's called Greener Fest because it's Greener Fest. That's we're, right. We, we, they, the, the city wouldn't license us if we called it Hemp Fest. Right. They wouldn't license us. So the, to avoid that, we made it a Greener Fest and 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 you know went for the green environment. You know? and, but it was the hemp on the background was the big thing, and all the artists there that day were in support and speakers. I actually. Hey. What year was that again? 2010. 2010. 2010. 180 yards. R3. So. Might want to hit less than the driver there. Oh. Let's do that. Let's do that. Oh, I left it. Whoa. Well, that could be worse. The distance was good, just a little right. Yeah, no, could have been way worse. All right, 41 yards out of the rough. Plenty of green to work with. There you go. Go in. Ooh. All right, getting closer with those. Those is going to go in. So it was pretty cool, the festival. I mean, we had, uh, oh, gosh, some famous writer, who uh, George Clayton Johnson, who was wrote Ocean's Eleven. And, yeah, I know. Yep. Yeah, George and Star Trek and Twilight Zones. And uh, he came out and, you know, he was a big supporter because he was good friends with Jack. And we brought in... Uh, some pretty good artists. We had a lot of fun that day. And oh, hey, Colleen decided to actually show up. She says hi to Jim. Hey, Colleen. 84 foot putt. This might be the longest one I've had. Looks like a chip. That is going to get about two thirds of the way there. Huh. Wow. Whoop. All right, to me again. So sorry, I interrupted your uh, story. Well, yeah, no, we're just you know I'm trying to recall, but uh, we had a lot of really cool artists on the on the out there that day. We had Bruce Marjolin, Margolin, who's a, a big attorney in the city for the the, the fight for cannabis legalization, and uh, Bruce was with us that day. We had a, just had a lot of fun, and the support of the city was good to see. Right, you could see what was coming. I think that's what I'm saying. You could see that things were going to turn on around and open up. But it's been a very difficult road for anybody who decided to go down it. Um, that's for sure. And some of the ironies, you know, you start getting into who's distributing things. And I thought it was kind of ironic that the largest distributor in uh, out of Orange County for the state of California, the former head prosecutor in California. Yeah. So he was a state prosecutor. Generally how it goes. Yeah. You learn the, uh, how to punish people for something and how to get around it. And then you become yeah. the person that you were punishing because exactly. you figured out the, the tricks. Yeah, no, it's amazing. So he's and a nice guy, you know, but he's yeah. like, that was his job. He was a prosecutor. It's like working in an industry and then becoming a lobbyist. He's like, I get it. I understand it now. Okay. You going to get up there? You're oh, going to get pot. up there? Yeah. Uh, Inside again. Too much. If it stops. Ah, oh, just. <laughs> hey. Colin was having a very important union conversation with another actor. 
Did you miss anything? You missed a lot. We've been telling stories about boxing, about Jim's foray into becoming a uh, famous actor with Robert De Niro. And I wasn't a famous actor. <laughs> I you were on around. your way, but chose another path. <laughs> no, I stumbled around, but was really blessed to be on the set with these kind of people, you know. Um, I grew up watching De Niro, and so I was amazed, you know. I was just kind of overwhelmed by him, really. Um, so, you know, the work, you know, from The Godfather on, it was, it was nonstop. Sure. He was phenomenal. So for a guy like me, it was incredible. Well, I loved working on uh, Hollywood Nights. I mentioned that, that set because you had so many young stars who weren't really stars yet. Right. Like Danza, Michelle Pfeiffer, and, and Fran Drescher, and, and this, this guy Robert Wool, And they just were so loose and had such a good time. And, and you'd sit with Michelle, and you knew she's going to be a superstar. I'm almost you positive did. I have a DVD of Hollywood Nights at my house on my shelf right now. Oh, it's, it was a fun movie. And we yeah, shot Hollywood Nights with a K-N-I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we shot it... Uh, from 10 o'clock at night till 6 o'clock in the morning, and, and much of it was shot at Riviera Country Club. Oh, really? Yeah, we spent a lot of time on the 18th hole. Um, oh, I... Yeah. Yeah, we had... first... Sorry. No, it's okay. I got distracted you there, I think. You did. Yeah, well, Riviera uh, opened up, and we did all... That's where we had our, like, the prom nights at the... Right. It was supposedly, you know, wherever it was, but it was Riviera. We shot a lot of scenes there. But it was great. Floyd Matrix directed it, and... Uh, they, uh, 110 yards. They, they encourage, bring a little beer, just drink it on the set, relax. We had a lot of fun. Uh, Travolta would show up and roller skating with Mar Mary Lou Henna. Mm -hmm. and, and it was just like, it was like 1980, right? So right. it was pretty cool. Beginning of all these careers. Well, Travolta was famous for Saturday Night Live and Sweat Saturday Hogs. Night Fever. Yeah, yeah, Saturday Night Fever, too. Saturday Night Fever. Sweat hogs, get over that. Get that grease. No, oh my God. <laughs> grease. Grease at the yeah, time. Yeah, he was huge. Yeah. Was so huge. We both hit good tee shots here, so yeah. we'll see how we get out of this. How we get out of the trail. 80 yards out of the deep rough. We talk about cannabis somewhere there. We talk about cannabis. Robert Wool would pick me up at Wilshire in the 405 to go to the, the to go to the set at night. He'd say, "Meet me at eight o'clock at the the exit there by Veterans Administration." You know. Yeah. He'd pick me up, and first day he picked me up, he opens up his ashtray and goes, "Grab one." Right. And there was like ten joints sitting in his ashtray, and I looked at him, my eyes got big. I'm like, "Really, Robert?" He goes, "Light one up. What's the matter with you?" And I'm like, "Okay, okay. I'm not. I'm gonna get in trouble." Hollywood, <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, that was Robert Wool. So I'm in some stuff, though, huh? Yeah, just got a 24 yardish punch out of the, uh, the junk. Oh, yeah, man. too much. Misreading. All right, same thing coming the other way. Misreading it. All right, twenty yards. Just to just yeah. To, uh, yeah. There you go. That'll roll. That's the shot. I used to do that. I used to know that shot really well. I could work the seven iron years ago like a putter. And, That's something I've never been able to do is you know i think it's a bit more of an old school where you just got used to hitting every club in the bag for a chip because you right. see how far it would land how far it roll out right i hit a wedge from anywhere around the green and hit a different kind of shot with the same club and i feel like that's more of a a new school yes you know, it is. professional it is. players just grab the wedge you know, we, I, I was taught you know, seven iron around the edge. You can do you nine. You know, yep. uh, six iron. Just yeah, you hit it like a putter. Yeah. Hit it like a putter, and, and, and I was and, and I had better. My legs were balanced in that time, and I wasn't off kilter. Yeah, I made a putt. Oh yeah, and and boy, did it work for me. It was right. Like, oh man. Well, I, it seems like a so much simpler way where if you just learn that you're here to here with the seven iron does this, here to here with the nine iron does this. But for me, every time I've ever tried to take like a seven iron from the edge of a green and just kind of chip it, I hit it. 10 miles that's, past. Okay. That's how it works for me now. And I, since I've come back, when we started playing again, and I grabbed a, a right, I said, I used to love this. And it was like, right. what happened? So 
for me, it was something balanced. But yeah, I was taught it was like it was like a putter, and you could adjust to open the blade, close the blade, mm -hmm. just keep it low and through the middle. And man, it did, the ball would do some phenomenal things. That, that's for sure. Ten feet. Yeah, it's you know, for me now, for some reason, you know, taking a sixty degree wedge and just feeling the difference between a twenty, thirty, forty foot yard whatever shot seems easier to me and i get it and i and i'm caught in the middle of both of those now i've play, i've learned how to play the new system and i and i'm as comfortable with that as i as ever in a sense so i get it it's weird right it's like when they used to um bobby jones had a very loose handle right yeah and and ben hogan had wow wow ben hogan was a little firmer in in you know, he had that late release. Yeah, Bobby was really loose, right? I mean, he was so supple and loose with his movement. Bobby who? <laughs> yeah. Oh, stop. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Okay. I mean, you don't even hear Ben Hogan's name anymore, do you? You're in. Okay, good. You don't even hear Ben Hogan's. Yeah, I mean, if you know, every once in a while you hear a golf broadcast where they talk about Ben Hogan, but yeah, it's pretty rare. It faded out. I mean, when I was growing up, that was the you, the stamp, the imprint. It was Ben right. Hogan. Ben Hogan. Five rules of golf. You know, that well, that's. I mean, that's literally how I started playing golf. Cause someone had asked me not too long ago about how you know how I got into it, and it was like you know I I started going to the par three course at Los Feliz every weekend and bought a set of clubs and then that's when we started playing right and i think even you might have given me ben hogan's book I have probably it. i was very adamant about ben right and i remember you know the way that i learned how to play golf was reading that book and watching youtube videos yeah and that was basically it yeah and i went from you know never touching a golf club to getting to like you know a 10 handicap in a year just from reading that book and watching YouTube videos. There you go. No, I think that's right. Well, I remember the first time you had all the basic swing flaws that all of us can have, right? And the next time I saw you, you were you, you were corrected and swinging like a pro, man. Yeah. So, uh, you know, digesting that information and processing it, amazing. But, you know, that, that book at least simplifies the handful of things, the grip and the basics of the swing that... You figure that out, the rest planes. of it kind of works, yeah. Planes. My biggest problem has been the planes a lot because of my, my leg balance. My left leg being so bad, um, I, I, I'm, I'm off plane a lot. You know? Right. Like left, right, breaking that glass. Like Hogan would say, don't break the glass. Felt good. Yeah, just just under it, just a yeah, tiny just bit. Yeah, a little under, right? All right, it's par five. That's because I need to come like that, and I'm coming a little. Yeah, you're yeah. you're. Most people have trouble getting under the ball and hitting up with the driver. You're going just a little too far the other way, where you're actually getting underneath it more than you need to. Yeah, yeah. All right, so hit another one down the fairway yeah. here. Give yourself a chance at a birdie if you get on in three. I wonder if uh, these clubs are even. Well, you do have the old school clubs at this point. Now you got through it good, just a little. I put a little more finish. I just I did come over the top. Yeah. I think quick with the left hit. Yeah, there. yeah. And All I'm right. To drag it that way. Two thirty-five into the wind. See if I can get there with a three wood. And sure enough, Fran Drescher. Yeah. That voice, Madonna me. You'd hear her with that that. La, 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 la. <laughs> Just made how her it is at all times. How it is. I don't think she ever put anything on it. <laughs> yeah, it's not an exaggeration. No, I don't think so. Not much. She'd be. <laughs> Sweetheart, though, great kid, really nice gal. Yeah, I like the way you lean into that right hip. No, it didn't catch it. Let's try that again.
Oh, it didn't catch. It didn't. Yeah. It's weird. Ah, caught that one. Caught that one. <laughs> <laughs> caught that one. God. Ay, ay, ay. It's a lot more tiring than it looked like, or you think it would be from. Yeah, well, you know, you're not you're not taking those fifteen or ten minute walks in the middle, right? Right. One eighty out of the rough into the wind. That's a good workout, and I can feel it, I like it. Just a treat to hit a ball. There you go. That's a yeah, good that one. Right there. Get over Pop there. over. Don't you dare, you little uh, mama loop. Found the bunker that's there specifically to catch that. Yeah, that's what that was for. <laughs> that's exactly what that was for. Troublemaker. All right. I'm going through the tree. Oh, that's not even aiming me at the green. So this shot is so bad. You need to. I think I'm better off aiming over here. 150, wind's going into me right to left. Mm -hmm. This should come out low enough that that first tree is not a problem. It's the trees after that. I'm going to try to hit a sort of a knockdown set. Low and through. Oh, I caught the top of that one. So I know what course I wanted to ask you if it's on this machine. Yeah. Wingfoot. Wingfoot. Um, that's a good question. Let me take a look. Just because that's where my friend Keith grew up. I mean, he, played, he grew up on that course, I think, with Corey Payne. Years ago. Oh, me, you let me Corey take Payne. my shot. Oh, really? Look in a second. All right. 35 yards. All right, 35, out of the bunker, up eight feet. Try to hit this one like a real bunker shot. Get out, go. All right, on the 81 feet. Thirty-five, thirty-one yards. Don't think Wingfoot is on the list. There's a, there's ninety-seven courses on this list, and Wingfoot is not. How about um, Shaxum Maxim? A what now? Shaxum. I don't even know if that course is still alive. It was in New Jersey. It was a, a private mm -hmm. course in Jersey. They probably changed the name. Right. Oh, really? Didn't quite get it up? No, I didn't get it up there. Oh, that was a bad hit, you see? Balls. Yeah, I'm just lodged in the uh, face of the rough here. <laughs> <laughs> like he's playing real golf. Oh, he's got the ball in his pocket. I'm ready. <laughs> uh, yeah, this would be something. I, oh, it's up, though. It's, it's 82 feet, 82 feet, so 30 yards. Yep, now just roll Not enough, I didn't there. catch it though. Oh. Kind of worked off my leg, did not hold me. All right, you're up 40 feet down uh, uphill, <clears throat> uphill nine inches. Nine Looks like inches. you got down and then up. You're, you're going over a couple bumps here, so this is going to be a journey. It's a journey, nice and smooth. I think you're going to like that. It's going to go back to the right. Inside a gimme range, just enough. Two inches inside a gimme range. Thank you there. Felt like a good hit. Oh, oh I like barely hearing that. I like that sound. The, the reassuring yeah. sound. Nice little egg. All right. Um, this is my par putt on this par five. That's not great. 25 feet. Right to left, up nine inches. Well, I thought that was perfect. Yeah, I just pushed it a little bit. That's yeah, about right. Bit. So if you, you know, back to boxing with the Russos, 
Um, I have a nephew down in Florida who's uh, fighting in the amateurs now. And, oh, yeah. Uh, he's competing, about to compete in the Golden Gloves. He's 25 years old. Oh, really? Uh, he's 15 and 0 as an amateur. He's, uh, he's on his way to want to turn professional. Now, and, how many, uh, is there a, a number of fights that you typically have as an amateur before you turn pro? Is there like, are we no. looking for 20? Are you looking for like a certain number? Or it is depends, it just a. It really depends on the individual. Um, I would recommend a good amateur career to anybody. Right. Because you're going to learn fundamentals. And you get in there with pros. I mean, there's, the styles are slightly different, but if you know how to box, which is what you're going to learn in the, in the amateurs, yep. then you're going to be okay in the pros. Right. So, um, you know. That, that, that's, uh, there's all kinds of, uh, you know, people decide to turn pro. I'm telling my, um, my, my nephew wanted to turn pro right away. Yeah. And um, I'm like, nope, please don't you dare do that. I won't be very happy. Your, your grandpa won't be happy. It's just one of those things you just know. Yeah. Like as, a, as their trainer, coach, whatever, you just say, look, you're not ready. And then one day, all of a sudden, you're like, you're ready? You're ready. Yes. You can see it in the smoothness, like you notice with the swings of a golf club and uh, the transfers and the, and the way the punches and combinations and movement come. Um, when it starts to flow naturally, uh, it's real obvious. Now, my nephew is uh, super athletic and has incredible dexterity, ambidextrous, um, right. powerful. This kid is like a miniature Roy Jones. Okay. I'm blown away by him. What so, weight class? 140, 147. So welterweight would be the well, – he'll probably find himself as a junior welterweight, welterweight. Mm -hmm. uh, he's about five foot eight, a little bit taller. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, what am I looking at here? 300? Yeah, just, just hit a driver right, right down the middle. Oh, I'm sorry. So, yeah, no, he's a super talented fighter, and he's actually training fighters as well. Um, down in Fort Lauderdale. And he was one of those guys like uh, Kimbo Slice. You might remember that name? Yeah. All right. Rest so my, my nephew grew up in Fort Lauderdale where that whole, whole thing took place. Broward County, I think yep. it's called. And he was uh, in the backyard, street, you know, hand uh, slap fighting, punching with uh, you know, heavyweights. And I got videos of him on YouTube knocking guys out of the, out of the square. So he, he was, he's, he's a fun little fighter to watch, and I think we'll, we'll hear his name in the future. Hmm. Matthew Rambo, Matthew Rambo Russo. Matthew Russo. <laughs> and, you know, again, it's the Fort Lauderdale, so it's where are you at? You know, it's, he's, his little kid has been boxing now since he could stand up. Right. Matthew wasn't, didn't grow up around my, um, my brother wasn't as involved, let's say, with the boxing, with the fight game, and he didn't grow up around my grandfather. So we didn't have those, that training until he started hanging out with me a little bit. And taking him through the videos and telling him what to look for. And yeah, 210, 220 yard shot here. Gotcha. So. All right, so he got into it a little later. A little later. And, well, you know, my, my brother worked with him a little bit. And, but the nuances, you need to spend a lot of time on. Right. And, and so now he's learning those nuances. And in, in the last three years, his ability, he could go pro now. Right. He could turn pro today. If it, I, I wouldn't stop him if he said that's what he was going to do. Oh, oh, I adjusted that wrong. So what happens? So if he decides to go pro, what's what happens? You just get on an undercard fight somewhere. You've yeah. got to go through some sort of organization to. Well, in his case, you know, you got to get a license. You got to get licensed. So you have to get med you know, pass the physicals and and get a, get your license. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. Once you get the license, you can start booking fights. Uh, what you, is what does getting a license entail? Is it taking some kind of test? Is it? No, it's make you're physically capable and able. It's not like um, right. yeah, driving test or anything like that. Right. It's really just, you know, they'll, they'll check you. They're not going to give, like, if you walk in and you haven't had any fights in your life, you're not going to get a license. Right. Yeah. But if you've got a little couple bouts behind you and you're winning and then uh, and the, and you got a trainer and the trainer's like, right. yeah, this kid's ready to go and, and you'll get your license. Um, we're, I, I was trying to, if, it was, if I had full control over Matthew, I'd probably point him towards the Olympics, even at 25. Right. Um, I'd like to see him come out of the Olympics with a big name and, and following, and, and then you could go around and fight for four, five, six years and not make it a 20-year career. Right. <laughs> make some money, get out. Get out. You yeah. know what I mean? Get out while you're, while you're the, the idea is to get out while you still have some brains intact. Well, you're somewhere in there. Yeah. 50 <laughs> yards away. Just Just hit it. Like you're uh, 60 yards away. Yeah, okay. Maybe 70. I'm going to keep it low. Think I should keep it low? I think just hit a 70-yard wedge. wedge. Just a stock 70-yard yeah, yeah. shot. And if it 
misses the uh, trees in front of you, then you'll be on the green. One of the luxuries of playing simulated golf is you don't have to actually climb into the woods and navigate the rattlesnakes to hit this shot. I found an alligator when I was in Orlando one year. Oh, geez. I didn't go after that ball. I have not seen an alligator on a golf course, but I've only played in the Southeast a couple times. This was Orlando, uh, yeah. Oh, my God. I think you're, uh oh, you get it. Kind of. You'll be able to see the green on the next shot. Yeah, <laughs> and I was shooting blind. Yeah, there was an alligator. I hit the ball, went in the woods. I was surprised. And uh, I was like, it's a little ice. Yeah. 50, oh. 50 yard shot here. Oh, look at that skip up. Oh, it checked up a little too quick. <laughs> well, it, the hill killed it a bit. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. I got it. All right, yeah. 15 feet. 30 feet. All right, I'm going to hit a little, just a little wedge. <laughs> just a little one. Yeah, really. This is that shot we are talking about. You gotta hit that donation button, and I'll uh, talk to you about the Tesla pill. This is the this is the tough this, one. These this is the shot we were talking about, kind of like. Look at that! Oh, come on! Stop! Yeah, everything just goes away from. Wow! Away from me there. Yeah. Oh, this is you. Lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you were close Let me drain this puppy. Closer than I was. <clears throat> Tesla pills are only for uh, subscribers. Nice and soft. This is a downhill. Just hit it five feet. There you go. Yeah. Oh, just a little left. Yeah. I kind of did that too. Yeah. You know that? I did that. Yep. Just a tiny, tiny that. pull. Totally did that. I felt it, saw it. Good result, though. Yeah, no, it worked out. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right, 12 feet for my par. Oh, see how it, like, bounced. All right, who's who's up first on this one? You might have won that hole. <laughs> I don't know about that. I love this. They just plug right in. Yeah, so obviously this is the, the mat that would be for the lefties, but I like it for having it here because yeah. with the driver, I end up kind of standing right. yeah. here. Right, You're big and you need some space. Big, big foundation. So yeah, it's like, it's like Legos. All right, this is me. We got 192 yards. Wind's behind. Green's two feet below. I'm gonna hit a six iron. I'm like three wood right in my wheelhouse. <laughs> Distance like the three wood. Falling off a cliff on this back nine. I was, you know, a couple over until that one hole that I four putted. Well, you watching what I'm doing, man. I'll I'll take you down a bad bad road real quick. Nice. Not hitting the iron oh. solid. I'm kind of off of the toe. Uh -huh. I mean, it's going to work, but. Yeah, yeah. Long putts. Long putts. When was the last outdoor course you got on? Uh, we played. What did we play last week? Um, played Wilson a couple times, Rancho a couple That's times. It. Playing That's Encino it. tomorrow. Oh, cool. Rustic next week. That's a good swing right yeah, there. Yeah, I balanced myself first time today. <laughs> I, I used to do this. I'd put the, glove, the club to the left, and then I'd, and it would step in here, and I'd be pretty well lined up. It's tough to do when you get half a knee, right? Yeah, yeah. No, balance. When that, once that leg gave out and started getting weak, no matter. 42-yarder. No matter what work I do. All right. Sixteenth hole. 
It's going to be good. Just roll out. Yeah, no, uh, not enough. Up. Too, too much too, underneath too it. Yeah, a little. And next with this, let, when I swing righty, I do this. Yeah, you kind of lean backwards yeah, into it. And I, one of the goals was to try and drive into that left leg a little more, get yeah. the leg to pull me through. Yeah, you want to get into the left side, but you want it to be more of a turn. Yes. All right, 64 feet up, 2 feet, 11 inches. Got to whack this pretty hard. Pull it a little bit, but that seemed excessive. So I've had six operations on this left leg. Six. Six. And, you know, a lot of them were just arthroscope to check right. what was going on with the ligament replacements that were in there after a couple of years. So those were minor and little cleanups and stuff, but two ACL replacements. And, uh, you know, I go back, I'm like, well, I don't even know if I would do that again. <laughs> so... Now they want to do the whole, replace the knee joint, which I think is what I'm going to do. Fifty-four feet, wow. Let me try it. Let's see what happens here. Oh, just past the hole. Power. There's a lot of power when you do that, so you gotta, you gotta get the backspin really. All right, I'm 15 feet. Please, please, really? Does that weird little pop at the beginning? I'm thinking that's going in. I'm sitting there going, oh, that's it. Too. So the reason I brought up the surgeries was the last surgery, when they replaced the last, put the new ACL in, that was 20 years ago. And when I came out of the uh, anesthesia, the surgeon says, yeah, it was a tough job, blah, blah, blah. And he'd done all the work on my leg all over the years. He's a Raiders surgeon. But he looks at me and he says, I readjusted the angle of your foot, of your right. lower leg. And I was like, why'd you do that? He goes, well, because you keep getting damaged, and I just figured this will take the pressure off your knee joint. Right. I'm like, you shouldn't have done that. I was really upset because I've been skipping rope, doing yoga, balancing. I've, I've never been able to find the balance ever again. Right. Ever again. Yes. Just My ankle fundamentally changed yeah. here. And the ankle doesn't hit solid. The foot hits and turns. Right. I was, and I didn't know. I was like walking my dog, and I'm like, well, that one's good. And then this one's. <laughs> so he did me a favor, and he did Pop me a, this putt in. Tried to do me a favor, and, and uh, at the same time, maybe cost me a lot. Right. You know, so. Yeah, that's, a, that's unfortunate. You got to put on the uh, black dot. Black oh. Dot. Nice and soft. Da straight downhill. Yeah. Just hit this five feet. Yeah. There you go. Oh, he's got it. Yeah. Oh, that it's was a hole. That was luck. Man, that, 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 that was a magnet. It. Looked like a magnet pulled it in. Easy. Yikes. All right, 17th hole. It's getting dark now. The sun's, the sun's almost set. Sun is almost setting on our round here. 530 yard par five. Let's go out this way. Par fiver. See if I can hit a straight drive. I only hit really two good drives today. Something kind of blocked. Whoa. Good. It's just right. Might catch now. Not going to catch the fairway. way. It's left, left hip just feels uh -huh. like. I'm going to turn into it. It's a little stiff, a little tight. If I can figure that out tomorrow for real. Looking for the T's? Yeah, the little yellow. There they go. Put them in your pocket? Oh, no, they're back here. <laughs> yeah, probably. You know, that's, that's a likely place, bro. <laughs> Hmm. 
I got under it, didn't I? Yeah. Yep, underneath. Yeah, we expect a little better from our uh, surgeons instead of just making up things as they go along. Yeah, I mean, that might have been something he was told, taught to do, but... Um, it's just, just winging it. Yeah, yeah, readjust it so you don't put pressure on it. I mean, yeah, you know, I was like, why didn't you sue him? I don't know, like, I probably right. should have. I probably should have, but I was like, I like him too, you know? And I'm like, right, it's doing tough, yeah. yeah you, you, know, you tend to give those types of professionals the benefit of the doubt. Right, and he knew what he was doing, I thought so. 260, still you. Oh, I'm wearing it out, huh? Okay. Okay. Good contact there. That one launched at a much better angle. All right, this is me out of the right rough, like I've been on every hole that I've hit a driver on. 250 into the wind. You need a second. Yes. Yeah. We'll be right back. All right, we are back. Quick break there. Left my golf club back on that last hole. We found it. The nice it. people behind us grabbed it. All right, I'm trying to hit a 250-yard three-wood up a hill into the wind. This is no problem. i to finish this round before the rain comes. Yeah. Oh, my God. Just hitting run. terrible shots into... Garbage. Why All right, me? you're 103 yards out. I'm on a clubs are a mess. The elf expects consultations from his medical professionals before they. What's that? Prize. <laughs> One of our our friends in the chat is 
you know, saying that it seems like a consideration that could have been decided upon during a consult with risks and such, but being discussed. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> absolutely. I, I just, Slight I trusted him and I thought, okay, he knows what he's doing and it's going to be okay. And, you know, six months, seven months, a year, and it's not, it wasn't. So 20 years later. Under that one a little bit. Yeah, I, I didn't finish the stroke well. Okay. All right. Me, 80 yards from the side of the garbage. Oof. Got a recovery. Yeah. All right. I got to hit this straight up so I don't hit the bush in front of me. Like a 100 yard wedge. Oh, that bollocks. Oh, uh, just hit it straight up. Wow. Mmm. Good, too. It's going to be you. I'm just inside. 39 yards Uphill. up 10 feet. A little 45, 50 yard pitch. Oh, that looks nice. That looks nice. Inside a gimme range. Doesn't even have to putt. Oh, no. Is it? Yeah, yeah. it's four foot eight. Yeah, four foot nice. Eight. Doesn't even nice. the putt. Nice. We like that. <laughs> Jim likes nice that. shot. Can I do the same thing? 37 yards. One of the biggest problems of the failure of the surgeries in the leg, is that I pretty much had to give up my, my yoga practice. Oh, yeah. Um, I just couldn't do standing postures where I had to bend my knee. Uh, at, at certain angles and, or stand over it, weight bearing postures and certain right, certain I mean, seated I mean, postures, uh, the lotuses. It just was a real nightmare for me, very frustrating. So I hope once I get my, uh, and I had spent many years in, in the Hatha yoga world studying Iyengar. So that was kind of hard, you know, giving it up. But frustrating when you jump in a posture, you can't stay in it. And you, you just, you know. Set down. Oh, oh no, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, it I almost looks like Hanson Dan coming up. It does. Having a having to give up, you know, your sort of well being hobbies. Yeah. Because of some I mean I could work around it, but the problem was it's not how my mind works and right. I would get into certain postures I wanted to do and uh I couldn't do them. And so I could have eliminated all that and just done other stuff, but it, it just wasn't in my wheelhouse to be like that. I wanted like I want to master all the postures. Right. And, and uh so hey, you feel like you're missing out on a big part of your Yeah thing you yeah know? so i just kind of got frustrated and put the practice i do headstands and back bends and things but i don't do the practice that i once did right all right 18th hole wow we got I, mean, I actually had fear if i would even last <laughs> we're almost there 18th <laughs> I hole. i feel great i was like you know, all right so we got wow. a kind of split fairway we're over to the right here is where the fairway is and then you got to go over another gap so i'm going to aim you right there's 200 ish Thank you. Into the wind. Perfect. Perfect. Into the wind. <laughs> Keep it low and let it go. <laughs> what did I do? I tried to rip it. Did you miss it? I, I did. Yeah, didn't even hit, huh? Didn't even, didn't even catch <laughs> you it. You lucked out there. Didn't even catch yeah, it. Yeah. Pre really, mulligan. That was really bad, man. I was watching the screen and I heard the uh, immediate ceiling yeah, went, noise. Oh, it went straight up. Yeah, the, uh, the, the cover on the top part is a lot tighter than the side, so it makes a much louder noise that I can recognize. <laughs> right, I'm watching this one. All right, that's good. I got a freebie. Yeah, that was a good swing. Again, just, I mean, you're just popping it up a little. I, I'm feeling, I'm coming under it. A little bit. I got to come this way. Maybe you'd use the one T lower. Might yeah, for now, but I do have to Yeah, you come into this leg. It's I'm just bailing out of the leg. 
or not into it. <laughs> All right, what kind of terrible drive am I going to pull off? I'm going to try to skip this whole side fairway. We are hitting into 10 mile an hour winds, so this is going to be... That's one of the things I have trouble with is with the Hogan, he tell you to concentrate on these inner muscles and your inner thighs. Right. And my left leg is always like sliding to the left. It's like never there. <laughs> can't, can't do that. No, I can, but it just don't want to. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm in the wrong spot. All right. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not in the, in the mechanism. I'm going to hit a bomb here. <laughs> Come on. Yes. Oh, look good. at that thing go. It's gonna be okay, but it's not a good drive. Ooh, it's playable. That ball was like like moving like that. Yeah. Almost like when it does in real life, the way it kind of explodes a little bit. Yeah. 257. All you got. Yeah, so you just gotta let's aim you middle of the next fairway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just gotta get it over the gap. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my god! Oh my gosh! Almost got. <laughs> I tried to stay in this like. <laughs> well, you get down on that one. I, I tried to. I literally tried to keep the like. <laughs> no, didn't work. All right, hundred and caught seventy for the rough, the wind, the uphill. Oh, all that good stuff. Huh? Yeah, you got, all you the got good stuff. a lot of things working against your distance on this show. All the good stuff. You, that was perfect. That's right. You hit this inside five feet, and you made a par, and it's all it's all forgotten. It's over. Oh, yeah. That, that the bushes you were in were. Well, next shot will be good. One twenty-two. Out of the rough, uphill, twenty-five feet. Into the wind. I hit a nine iron. Of course, you were playing the other day. Mm -hmm. The 18th looked just like Riviera's 18th. Coming up. Yep. Who, with, who was I playing with? Um, Which Was it Todd or Mark or Jeff? I think it was Todd. Okay, so that was... Um, hold on one second. Oh, I... It wasn't Jeff, that's for sure. It was Todd. What a treat for everybody, Brian. Sit. For all these, you know, all these golfers. To yeah, it's in. fun. Something to do it's, or we can come in at night when you're not going to go out. Doing, and it's just course. If it ever rains here, you know, you can come Yeah, it in never here. rains. It's, it does, but not to the virtual. 65 yards, up two feet into the wind. Jim. That's it's gonna be okay. Just not, I, I got away with something there, though. Yeah, you could <laughs> just just a little right. I got away just with it. Oh. I got away with it. Where would I end up? Just off thirty-two feet. Yep. All right, ten yards. I gotta just, right to left. just put this out to the right a little bit. Perfect. Oh, right? it didn't pick it no. up. Those, oh, my God. It's picked up all of those today. Because that was a beautiful shot. Yeah, we've had some. Anytime I'm trying to hit it 10 yards or right. less with a wedge, yeah. it's kind of 50-50. It's soft. And I'm trying to figure out if there's a spot on this mat that you can kind of put it that is more likely to catch it. Yeah, there it is. That was it. But, yeah. Sad. Sometimes I get caught by that pin. I think it's. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's the hole. But no. But that was a good. The first one I think was just. Beautiful. Yeah, I hit the second one a little harder just to make up for it. 25 feet uphill, one foot from the fringe. Nice and smooth, right, right through the ball. Oh. 
Oh, did he do it? He did it. Drained the little <laughs> putt on the last <laughs> hole of the day. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> nice. <laughs> Solid finish. Can I do the same thing here? Nine feet, three inches. A little downhill. There it is. There's something about Whoa. the the reed you think out to the left reeds that are not. So do you calibrate this? Yeah, do you, I do mean, you do the calibration, or does it get calibrated? It calibrates itself. It does yeah. But I feel like every putt I've hit that says start out to the left, and I and I'm just trying to hit this straight on the map here, like that. So the right yeah. to left one, no yeah. problem. It's the left to rights are just not right. Right. Interesting. All right, buddy. Nice job. We made it. 18 yeah. holes. I yeah. don't even want to look at the scorecard. No, that was no 111. That's probably fair. For that me. Was more <laughs> of a storytelling round than a uh, keep score round. Yeah, yeah, I could tell stories. So uh, thanks again, for everybody, for coming. Thanks, Jim, for coming Thank by. Thank you, everybody. For sure, have you back uh, very soon. Yeah. And next stream is going to be on Sunday with returning guest Biff Malibu. And uh, we haven't figured out what course we're playing yet. So what a name! I love it. Biff. Biff. Biff Malibu. Back in the yes. back in the eighties and nineties, he was Biff. So that, that is the best. That's that it for us. Have a good rest of the night. Take weekend, care, guys. guys. Thanks for watching. Well, that was.